All right. Well, good morning, everyone. This is Brian, and we're here for Forex Live this morning. It's 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 Central, on uh, Thursday, October 17th. And as always, what we'll be doing for the morning is we'll be going through the daily regimen for live trading and applying that to the daily report that comes out from Forex Joe every day to uh, find some trades. We're going to show how you apply Forex Joe's method under live market conditions uh, in conjunction with the reports that he puts out and uh, show how we can uh, use that consistent method to uh, give ourselves a little bit of an advantage in the marketplace and hopefully we can find some trades that will pick up some pips. Although it's uh, kind of an interesting day, we've uh, had some resolution uh, to, the, to the debt ceiling and, and shutdown it looks like and uh, so we saw some really big moves overnight and then we've got that coupled with some uh, planned schedule announcements for the day so we'll get into all of those in just a minute. Uh, I think Forex Show is going to be on with us here a little bit later and he'll provide his insights as well. So uh, for now, we'll just get things started. Uh, let's go through our disclaimer. We need to let you know that unique experiences and past performances do not guarantee future results. And I think everyone here understands that. I see mostly familiar faces on today. Um, I know you've probably got this slide memorized, but I am going to pause for just a second to give you an opportunity to read through it and um, you know, make sure that you know that trading does involve risk and uh, shouldn't be using anything other than risk capital. As a matter of fact, probably should use a demo account until you're um, confident with uh, the system you're using and, and with the trades. I mean, ultimately, it's up to you to place those trades uh, and, um, and and take that, take that risk. We're going to provide you with some training and, and some demonstration today, and hopefully you can apply that uh, to your education down the road. So I'm going to pause for a second, give you an opportunity to read through this disclaimer, and then we will get started. All right. That should be long enough. So, what is going on today? Lots of cool stuff. Lots of good things happening here. Let's see. All right. Well, first thing we're going to do is um, everyone should have in front of them their copy of the uh, daily regimen. And, of course, in order to get that, you can find it here under Forex Schedule. Uh, on the schedule page, you can just simply you know, download um, either the PDF or the Word document version, and uh, you can use that to, to fill it out. I usually print one out and fill it out manually, but you can do that electronically as well. Uh, the other thing that we should have open is our daily report, which can be found by going to Forex Alerts and then Daily Report, and it will pull up a separate page with your, uh, your daily report file. So we'll have that open. And then uh, lastly, you know, Forex Joe puts out an alert every evening. Uh, he may actually have an updated one coming out here shortly. We'll see. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we took it always a good idea prior to the session to read through what uh, Forex Joe has uh, has written for us here. There's a lot of great information around what's uh, what's occurring in the marketplace. So all those things we should have ready, and, and uh, now we can go ahead and start doing our analysis. We're just going to jump right into it. No use in... in uh, talking more than we have to about other things. Let's just go ahead and, and get right into it. Ultimately, you know, once you've been doing this for a while, it, this only should take you, you know, five minutes or so for each currency pair that you trade. Uh, it's a really quick analysis to do. It takes a little bit longer because we talk about each step and why we're doing what we're doing. So um, let's go ahead and get to it. For the Euro USD, uh, we're currently trading at 36.48. 36.48, really 36.49. Uh, much of pip. So here we are, 3648. Uh, first thing we're going to do is capture our channel information. So we're going to pop over to our daily report and we're going to have a look at what is our channel top, what's our channel bottom. And we see that we had a channel top at 3549 and we had a bottom at 3455. And that's the daily. We're concerned about the short term channel, this is one that we look at for our. our uh, initial analysis. Uh, next up is our support and resistance information. We want to check out what do we have for support and resistance levels. So currently trading at 36.48. So um, actually right here 36.45 is a, a little bit of a, of a decision point. Support resistance level at 36.45. Uh, if we break to the downside, we'll see 35.96, 3600, a big whole number. I would not be surprised if we saw that again. That's a big psychological level. And if we break below that, we have 
566. And if we go to the upside, we have 3695, that 3700, another big hole number for us uh, to keep an eye on of their psychological level. And if we break above that, we've got 3711. All right. So now, are we trending or are we oscillating for the day? So uh, that's the big question, right? And it uh, looks like here, if we look at this, we're definitely in an upward trend for the day. And that's confirmed when we ask the question, has the channel been broken? Have we broken above 3549 or below 3455? And uh, the answer there is yes, we have. We know we've broken it because we're trading above it right now. So channel's been broken. Yes, it has. Um, average daily range, well, today we've moved 152 pips. So uh, that's significant given the fact that we have been very range bound. We've been in the summertime, which you know saw 70 to 80 pip ranges. We were expecting to break out of that back into the normal you know, 100, 120 pip range uh, following the summertime blues. And uh, we came you know, right out of summer into a government shutdown, <laughs> which kept us range bound as well. So uh, we've really blown out what we would see for our average range, you know. So you know, right now we've been seeing an average range of 70 to 80 pips, 70 to 80 pips. But the you know, reality is, for this Euro USD, um, average ranges are a bit higher in that 100 pip range, 100 to 120. And uh, today we've moved 152 pips. So that uh, that's been quite a move, very very news driven, uh, which is actually our next question. What's going on in the news? What's happening in news? So um, we pop over to Forex Factory to have a have a look at what our news is telling us. And um, you know, here we see that we actually have uh, some news coming up. So we've had some news already. We had unemployment claims um, that came out. It was kind of level, actually a little. Well, it was level with the forecast. Uh, next up is here in about an hour. We have the uh, Philly Fed Manufacturing Index. Um, that'll be up a little bit later, so that's a, a high-impact news report that, that's planned to come out. So uh, we've got that coming up, so we just want to make a note. So is there news? Yes, there is news. And um, that's coming up at 10 a.m. Eastern. And uh, we'll, we'll couple that. We'll couple that with... Uh, you know, more than likely today we'll see some news bites and blurbs about what's occurring with our uh, government situation as well. So it could be a very interesting day. This might be a nice day to, to kind of stay away. We'll have a look and see, though, if we can find some trades. Uh, and the last thing we want to capture here is uh, what's going on in the futures market, what's going on in the Dow. Wow, that's really big. What's going on in the Dow, S&P, crude, gold, and silver. And uh, the reason we look here is so that we can find out um, uh, what the lean for the marketplace is. When I say the lean, you know, if we we, we want to know are we seeing a positive futures market or a negative futures market. And uh, typically, if we're seeing you know money flowing into the Dow, into crude, into gold and silver, it's flowing out of the U.S. dollar. And then conversely, if it's flowing out of these, it'll flow into the U.S. dollar. That's because as we uh, liquidate positions here. We're adding positions in U.S. dollars. We're adding U.S. dollars, and as we uh, take positions here, we're pulling them out of U.S. dollars and, uh, and putting them into these uh, into these futures. So, right now, overall, the futures market is seeing kind of a positive lean, and uh, so we can make a note of that. Which should indicate a, a weaker dollar. We'll see you know, if it continues to do that. Uh, the Dow is up earlier under under. Uh, uh, electronic trading has taken a bit of a dip here lately. It could just be a pullback. We shall see. So anyway, positive futures market indicates a uh, little bit of a weaker dollar. So let's see what that how that plays out. All right. So we've captured a bunch of information. We've uh, we know what our current price is. We know what our channel information is. We know where our support and resistance levels are, and then we know what the market's doing. You know, versus its uh, its current movement, average range, and whatnot. So, with all that said, we can now uh, pop over to our, our charts and uh, see if we can find some, some trading opportunities for the day. So, what do we see here? Well, we see uh, 36.45 is a decision point for us, which is kind of where we're, where we're trading right now, right this second. 
we're kind of hanging out right here at this little decision point. Now, if we break to the upside, we've got 36.95. This thing out of my way, 36.95, right through here, and to the downside, we've got uh, 35.96, which is right about here. So uh, kind of caught right in the middle of a range right now. Uh, one thing we can do is we can compress, you know, as Forex Joe likes to say, compress that channel just a little bit. And so if we do that, we also have this uh, this level here, this 3618. Um, even after this major uh, movement in price that moved up and, and now it's been hanging out, it's kind of established a support level down here at 3618, 3620 area. So, um, you know, again, you know, we, we see those whole numbers, you know, 3,600, 3,700. Uh, we typically also see 20, 50, and 80 in between there as well as, as stopping points. So we've got these levels that we're seeing here on our on our charts that are uh, really lining up. So we've, we've got our, our current decision point, and then we've got, um, you know, a support level down here and potential resistance up here. We've already moved 152 pips for the day. So that's, that's the piece that... Uh, you know, kind of has me a little bit wrapped around the axle here. Just um, you know, what's what's really going on? It's a pretty big move for um, for this market. You know, there there wasn't any any huge news to to really drive that. So, kind of interesting to see that. More than likely, it's just a reaction to what's you know um, to the to the potential of, of what's happening here in our U.S. government. So, um, and we'll let Forex Joe comment on that here in just a little bit. So for now, what are we looking at for, for trading opportunities? Well, we're pretty much ranged out as far as I can tell. Um, I don't know if they can push another 30 pips to get up here. If it does push to this area, I would certainly look to sell it <laughs> off of this. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and park a sell. Does this mean it can't move 200 pips? No, I mean, of course it can move you know, another 100 pips beyond this. I just don't see what would really drive it. Um, you know, We do have that, that report coming out here in a little bit. I don't know that that'll be enough to really push it through, and that's unless that's horribly, horribly negative for the U.S. market. So, um, what I would say is here, you know, if we do push up, if we do push and get to this this 36.95, you know, make run for 3,700, I would certainly expect that to uh, to reverse the first time, and for a number of reasons. You know, one, we we've, we've got a resistance level there. Two, you're around a whole number where you typically see. Um, you know, that'd be a, a whole number, that 3,700 great spot to look for resistance. And then uh, lastly, we're really extending our range on this uh, Euro USD. So you couple all those things together, and you can feel good about parking that seller. I know it's right in the direct face of, a, of an upward trend, but, um, you know, that the trend has to, has to stop at some point, and nothing goes straight up. It's always going to be stair step. So if it does come here, I would expect to see a bit of a reversal before it moved on. So um, I'm going to go ahead and park that one there from a sell perspective, and, and I think I've elaborated pretty well as to why I would be looking for that sell if we did get there. Uh, the next thing to look at is potential buying opportunities for this. And um, you know, I'm not sure this 3645, again, we're kind of the top of the range. If anything, um, I'd see it come back and retest 36, uh, 3618 or even 3600, and that's kind of the that's kind of the big if for me is, you know, where is it really going to uh, pull back to? You know, the whole number, you know, 3,600, or um, do we look here at this intraday uh, support level that we've established here at 3,618? So, um, you know, we can only really trade what we've got and not speculate. We, this 3,618 is set up to be a support level for us. So um, we go ahead and look to that for potential pullbacks for my buy opportunity. Actually, I'll put this at the top of that one. I'll take profit two here. All right, so um, I've got those set up, got those trades in. Well, select. There we go. <laughs> Move to buy and sell. So I'm using our software, moving to buy and sell at the same time. And uh, voila, we've got a trade on, got a trade in. So we've got two trades parked. Um, 
if we can if we can push you know prior to news, uh, we'll look to get these in. If not, what I'll do is I'll take them off and um, and wait. You know, if these trades don't trigger prior to news, which they may not, um, we'll we'll wait. You know, so if we're coming up 15 minutes before news, we haven't kicked in. We're not near them. We're going to take them off the off the um, terminal and wait. And then once news occurs, we'll wait 15, 20 minutes and see, let that settle out, and then we'll uh, we'll find a new trading opportunity. More than likely, we'll see news. You know, whip it up, whip it down, and probably come back to wherever it started uh, right before that news event. So, you know, we'll uh, we'll take care of that and see see what happens. So ultimately, we've got these trades on for a short term. And then uh, we'll see what happens with news. Right now, I'm not convinced that there's enough enough to really move them. We saw a big move overnight with the with the London Open reacting to the to the, uh, the U.S. issues, and uh, now we've just been kind of range bound ever since. So I mean, look for this for this London session. You know, really we've been stuck in about a 40 pip range here. I uh, just broke out of it actually just a little bit ago. So. We'll uh, we'll see what that brings. So we're just really going to have to. We've got some trades on, but we're going to have to wait post news. I think for these things to to trigger or give us an opportunity to trigger. All right. So next up, pound USD. Same, 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 same story here. Maybe not a real great day to, to trade it. Let's just have a look though and see if we can find anything. Currently trading at 61.33. And the reason I'm not real keen on, on these today is because we've, we've just ranged out so much. You know, we're not really dealing with a typical trading day where you've got nice channels established that you can take advantage of. Remember, most of this was was uh, driven on exuberance, so um, you know, we have to let that settle down. So there's going to be days when you jump into the market, you plan to trade live, and, and there's not a trade for you, and that's okay. It's okay to look at the market and say, "Hey, you know what? I don't have a shot. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna, you know, waste my ammo, and uh, you know, we're just gonna step back and, and uh, you know, wait for another day, wait for the right opportunity to come up." So um, this this may end up being one of those days, and we'll see if we can find some levels to trade from. But if the uh, if the trade doesn't get there, then uh, we just we just walk away, right? No use in, in risking money that we've uh, you know worked really hard to earn. When uh, when the market's not not uh, behaving in, in kind of a normal way, so you know why take the risk on an outside shot? All right, so channel information. So we're currently trading at 61. What did I say? 61.37. So 61.38, 61.37. Um, let's see what we've got here for channel information. Scrolling down to the pound USD. Well, we've got uh, 59.99 as our channel top, and we had 58.42 as our channel bottom. So those are in really no alignment here. Uh, you know, we saw 60.44 was a big number for us. That was a three or three channel here recently. It's two or three channel on this report. Uh, we've actually broken through that as well. So um, that might be a, a number to have a look at there. Just a number to, to keep in mind. Uh, support resistance levels trading at 31.38. Well, 31.37, 31, 61.37 is a, a decision point for us. Uh, below that, we've got 60.50, and then below that, 60.17. Uh, to the upside, if we break above this, we could go as high as 62.58. So uh, quite a spread between there. Looking to the upside, and that's just because of. You know, when this was was up, it really fell very rapidly, so there wasn't a lot of uh, support or resistance areas established there. Are we trending or oscillating for the day? Well, I think we would all agree that we're in an upward trend, <laughs> pretty pretty drastically. Uh, has the channel been broken? Yep, yeah, and smashed right through there. So yes, the channel has been broken. Um, what's our average range? Well, today we've moved 203 pips. 203 pips. That's significant. Uh, again, this is a, a currency that typically moves in that uh, 100 pip range, you know, 100, 110, 115 pips. Um, over the last few months, however, it's been very range bound. We did have some days that moved 200 plus pips, but for the most part, it was very range bound, and it was stuck in an 80 to 90 pip channel as well. So, um, you know, a typical channel over the last few months has only been 80 to 90 pips, but 
this year, um, you know, prior to the, the, the summertime blues uh, time period, we were we were seeing moves well over, you know, well into the 100, 100 plus pip range. So um, we'll probably be back to that now. We'll see. But uh, for the day, it's definitely uh, an odd market. It's it's moved well beyond what its normal range would be. Uh, news coming up. Yep. Well, we know there is news coming up at 10 Eastern, 9 Central. And we know what our futures market's doing. It won't have changed much in the last few minutes, um, although uh, we'll keep an eye on that. But right now, you know, we're seeing the Dow is down. Crude is down slightly. Gold and silver are uh, making a nice push right now. So uh, futures market overall, as a matter of fact, you know, if we look at this, uh, this heads-up dashboard, overall we're seeing a positive lean in the futures market, which should indicate a weaker dollar. All right, so with all that said, what are we going to do here? Well, I mean, again, same same kind of, of thing that we saw with the Euro USD. Um, is there a trading opportunity? Sure, there, there are probably opportunities. The biggest one I would see would be down here at 6044, which was a, a key channel that's been broken through. Uh, this was a key channel that, that got broken. It was a three of three. We've seen 6044 quite a bit. Um, you know, as a fact, yesterday, you know, we were trading below. It was a three of three channel pushed to it repelled off of it, just textbook stuff for, you know, what we do here with, um, you know, using Forex Joe's methodology. However, you know, last night we got some resolution and uh, this pushed through and, and this has pushed on. So um, it's really ranged out of what it would normally be, which makes it tough to, to look for a trade. And, and this is one of those times when you might say, you know what, funky day, let's, uh, let's shut it down, not take any unnecessary risks. But if uh, somebody had a gun to our head and we said, okay, we, we need to take the trade, what are we going to do? Well, we could, we could, I'm sure we could find something. So let's see what we can do here. We're currently trading at uh, 61.38 you know, at the time. It's traced a little bit to 61.34. Uh, we know 61.37 is a decision point for us, which is right through here. And we have uh, 60.50 which is right down here. I would favor 60.44 over that, so we'll leave 60.44 on. And then to the upside, if it continues to push upward, we'd be looking at 62.58. So what are we going to do? Well, you know, we're, we're not near any real, you know, we're, I guess we're trading right here to support resistance area, but we've got news coming up in a few minutes. If we didn't have news and we were ranged out like this, I would, I would certainly look to sell off of here because, you know, again, we're not going to keep going straight up. There's going to be some retracement. So I would expect, you know, after you see a, a, a long move like that, I'd expect to see some some retracement. But we do have news coming up. So with that said, probably not a great great opportunity to look for a, uh, a trade off of that level. So the next thing we might look at here as well, we could say, okay, if we push back down, oftentimes we see, you know, when we when we've got a trade, that has uh, pushed beyond the Asia high or beyond the Asia low, and you know, and price has pushed you know 15, 20 pips beyond it, sometimes a little bit more. We'll see it come back and retest that level as the U.S. session gets underway. So um, this may have already happened here, but you know, this could be a great spot to look for a trade. Um, although this Asia high is kind of artificial because it was really driven by this initial pop right as as London opened. So um, you know, what's the real Asia high? I, I'm, I'm not sure this is it. It might be back here. So this is just really setting up as one of those really confusing uh, charts for me to, to say, you know, how do we apply this, um, this, this method for the daily regimen? And again, probably is a, a, a great time not to trade. Uh, but if I was forced to it, what I would do is I would park a buy order down here at this, uh, at this, at this area that's been established as I was previously resistance, it's been broken, it hasn't been retested yet. Um, you've got two things going for you. One, um, you've got this high that was established. Two, it's right at a whole number, which is, you know, right there near that 6100. So, um, you know, good spot to look for a, a little bit of a blip before it, before it moves on. So, uh, with that said, I could go ahead and park a buy order down here. It's in line with the current trend. And um, it's a, a whole number you know, right there at a whole number that hasn't been retested yet um, after it's been broken. So we can go ahead and park that order here. 
take profit quickly, keep our risk pretty limited, and uh, put on that buy. So that's what we'll do for now. And of course, my same caveat, if this doesn't trigger prior to news, I'll take it off, wait for news to occur, and then see what trading opportunities exist. And we may not see many today. Once this has already moved like this, uh, we may be ranged out. It may be a good day to, to look for some counter trend trades, you know, uh, trying to trade off, off of this uh, established top now that we've, uh, we've ranged out of some of these. But of, of course, it's a risk because nothing is normal about this trading day, so it makes it a very high risk day to trade. So if you're conservative, you're better off not trading. Wait for a normal market. You don't have to be in the market. You don't have to be trading. That's a, a misnomer that a lot of us convince ourselves of. All right, so last one here is USDJPY, the US Yen, currently trading at 97.82. And what do we have? What's our channel information tell us? Well, pop over here to our channel. We see the daily report says... We have a channel top at 99.28, and we have a channel bottom at 98.44. Support and resistance levels, well, we're uh, trading at 97.82, so we've got 97.78 as a support level down here below us, and then 97.12. And to the upside, we've got 98.12, and then uh, 98.28. Trending or oscillating for the day, well, um, just as we've seen in the others, we're in a big trend for the day, downward trend. Has the channel been broken? Yes, it has. We certainly have broken through that channel. Um, average range, again, you know, today we've moved 124 pips on this currency pair. This has been very range bound here just the you know, last few days. It's been in a 50 pip range. Um, and if we look at, uh, you know, looking three months out, uh, we've been in about an 80, 80 pip range, so today we've moved well beyond that. Um, this is actually closer to what we would normally see for this currency pair. We normally see this pair moving in a, you know, 115, 120 pip range. So um, this kind of did what we might have expected for the uh, for the U.S. yen, as far as the uh, the total movement for this uh, news. Well, yeah, we know we've got news coming up, and we know what the futures market's doing. Hasn't really it won't have changed too much. A uh, big thing with futures market is we now have um, the floor traders are coming online here you know, in about two minutes. Everything that we've seen up to now has been like, well, I shouldn't say everything, but most of what we've seen up to now has been electronic trading. So uh, we'll see if this um, if this dashboard really starts, and it is starting to change a little bit. So you know, we'll see from here how it changes. Are we going to, you know, the Dow is really turning down, down, down. Um, you know, will that start to bring gold, silver down as well? If those start to turn, we might see some money coming back into the U.S. dollar. So it'll be interesting to see um, what happens during the during the um, live trading session for most of these. And the pits, the, your main pits open at, at 8:30 Central over in Chicago, but uh, we'll see we'll see what happens if this uh, current trend continues. All right. So with that said. Got some um, information here that we can look at. Uh, what do we see? Well, first off, we have our uh, support resistance level 97.78. So let's put that on the on the chart. 97.78, right there. If we break below that, we've got 97.12, which is way down here. 97.12, right around here. All right. And then to the upside, we've got 98.12, which was here. All right, so what do we have? And then, so really, if we put those on, we don't even really have to compress the channels because we're, we're looking at um, you know, pretty much a nice channel between here so this this is a little bit more normal of a of a trade. Whoops, we're gonna just do. So what we could do here is um, because of how this has moved. Gosh, we're in a big downward trend. Of course, we're kind of nearing the uh, the bottom of a range right now. Of course, every 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 session is different as well. Uh, I'd really like to see what it does with this uh, 97.78 area. 
my it's very counter trend, but um, so close to news. We're a half hour before news. I think what I'll what I'll look at here is is watch this 9812, even 9800, and and look to sell it. Probably the safest trade short term would be to sell off of 9800 right now, um, because this is a range you could certainly certainly get into and maybe get us in a trade even prior to news. So um, you know, this is this this currency is act this pair is acting a little bit more normal than what we would normally than what we've seen on the other two. So um, you know with this, if we can pull back prior to news and retest 9800 area, then uh, we'd certainly be looking for uh, you know see if we can continue the downward trend and, and sell it. Uh, the other the other opportunity. Is right here is to look right away for a buy off of 97.78, which is very counter trend trade, but we could certainly try it um, just simply because we're we're seeing a bit more of a of a normal market action here. Uh, we could certainly try it and see if we can get a few pips off of it. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Darn it! What's going on? Well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, could just reload the whole thing, but I really don't want to right now because we're going to try to jump on a trade here real quickly. So this is this is acting a little bit more normal, so I'm I'm okay with taking the risk on it. See if we can't get a few pips right away and lock in some pips on this U.S. yen prior to news coming up. So again, this is a very counter trend trade, but. Um, you know, here we're we're looking at a, a potential spot for a reversal, uh, given where we are with the average range and how it's behaved today. We've kind of uh, leveled out as uh, as London got in session. It's leveled out a bit. It's been trading in a pretty tight range. Now, you know, we're at the bottom of of what we would normally see for our average trading range, and uh, see if we can't reverse off of this. So, again, it's a risky trade, a little bit a little bit higher risk than we would normally take, but good spot to look for a reversal. You're at the end of a range of what you would typically see. Um, we're at a support resistance level, and um, let's let's park a buy and see if we can pick that up. I'm going to leave the sell off. I mean, we're coming up on news in about half an hour, so we'll leave the sell off and uh, see if we can get this buy to trigger, lock in a few pips, and then um, you know we'll see what happens with these other two um, as we get around uh, get around on news, take them off the table, and then trade them following the release of the news. So um, there's what we've got. Those are the trades we're going to put on for now, and uh, we'll see how it, see how they play out. I'll go ahead and turn it over to Forex Joe, and see what additional information he has for us for the trading day. Morning, everyone. Uh, okay, so we have a temporary solution. I just sent out a report, kind of highlighted everything that's going on right now. We've had some major moves. Uh, we've had uh, five of the top. Five pairs that we usually cover: the euro dollar, the U.S. yen pound dollar, U.S. Swiss Aussie dollars all moved about 100 pips. Canadians only moved in about 45 pips. The New Zealand dollar 87 pips. I talk about the reason why we're seeing this take place, and pretty much uh, the tapering now, which we didn't figure was going to happen until November, December, is pretty much put off for this year. Uh, because of the uh, political battle, for lack of a decent word, this dysfunction in Washington, this agreement, basically what it did was kick the can down the road. It's been talked about. Uh, we've written about it. So the dollar took a hit. Uh, they did it, nothing to talk about the debt. Uh, the debt's going to reach close to $17 trillion by the time they get ready to re uh, take a look at this. They have put in some deadlines of a Senate House committee that will address the long-term budget considerations. Some something to take into consideration is that it's been over four years since they've had a budget. So all they've done, and the reason that this continues to have more debt and we continue to see debt go up, is because that they've been unable to come to a conclusion for any type of budget for over four years. They also have the sequester that's going to be put into place right around uh, this time that they need to address. Something to take into consideration is that you will not have 
and I wrote about this yesterday and I'll reiterate it today, even if you get to this February 7th, they won't run into the situation what they were talking about uh, right now as far as being able to have the default. Uh, it will allow them to basically extend it, government spending, uh, a few months. I've heard even into May or June uh, enough money that will be put back. So I don't look for this to happen again. Um, it's kind of put some pressure. It's, it's awakened some of the people of what's going on. The key will be how successful or non-successful the Obamacare is between now and going into February. It's been a complete mess. Uh, people who's tried to get on to sign up have been unable. Uh, there's been some states where nobody's even taken advantage of it. There's been some other states where people have signed up thinking that they're going to get free health care. Somebody has to pay for this plan, so me, instead of me trying to get into a political battle between the Democrats and Republicans, how is this going to affect us as forex traders, where I think we're going to have more volatility. So basically what we're seeing today is a reaction. We talked about this uh, recently in the last week to 10 days, that we would retest uh, above the 3645 area. We've gotten up near 36.65. It'll take another push to get us above 3,700. I'm not saying that it will happen, but uh, basically what we're looking at is that you will now start seeing the government get back together today. I look for some form of an announcement probably tomorrow uh, of when non-farm payroll will be next week. They said that if they sign this bill and the government got work back to work today, and I wrote about this yesterday, that it would take till at least Tuesday to gather the information, which means sometime between next Wednesday and Friday, we will have non-farm payroll that we missed at the first of this month that was supposed to be on the fourth. Then we're going to have a kicker because non-farm payroll will be due again uh, the following week on the first. So it looks like for the first time that I can remember, we'll have back-to-back non-farm payrolls, the one that we missed here in October and then the one for November. So we will have a class. Once we've uh, found out what that date is, we will be sending out an email. We'll have a class. So everybody get prepared for that. So it looks like we're going to have two back-to-back non-farm payrolls. The other part of the equation is that then you'll have the central banks coming forward, the Bank of uh, England, the ECB, and we'll see what's happening there. So we're going to really get back to what fundamentals are as far as dictating what the policy is going to be. I think there will be kind of a movement today, then it will kind of shake around and then we will kind of settle in probably a new range, a little bit higher range, but this was anticipated uh, because of the way that we were headed before this mess took place. So those of you that were followed the trade alerts and was able to get into trades last night or those of you who might have been trading during the London session, congratulations. If you're in those trades and you've had some movements, I'd go ahead and take your profits. Maybe leave uh, the last lot open for the rest of the day. Going into tonight, we'll take a, take a look at what's happening and see what could transpire. So we've had the euro dollar, as we alluded to. It's went above 3,600. It's moved about 150-some pips, as Brian talked about. We've had the US yen go from 99 all the way down to about 97.75, that range that had previously been in place. Uh, it's looking back above 90, getting near back 98. The pounds picks off all the way above 60.44, all the way to about the 61.10 area. You've got the Swissies that's dropped back down near 90. You've got the Aussie dollar that we've talked about because of it being a commodity currency. It's risen, and we've been sharing this with you. It's risen above 89, all the way back up to about 96 now. U.S. Canadian still range bound. The New Zealand dollar is pretty much hanging around in a range bound area. So we have these numbers. We have everything going in place at that time. If they're unable to get their act together with the predicted cost of what the Obamacare health insurance is going to, to accomplish, there is a strong possibility that our national debt before the end of 2014 could reach near 20 trillion dollars. That is not me. That's from people a lot smarter than me that are predicting that because of the cost and the hidden cost, hidden taxes that are involved in this law. So basically I'm all for trying to help people for health care. I'm not all for uh, being lied to because of what was campaigned 
what was said and how it should be taking place. Hopefully, the two parties, uh, which I'm not in favor of any party right now, Republican or Democrat, can sit down and come to some type of an agreement that's going to at least get us to the 2014 elections and then let the people decide what they want to do. We had the, the Beige Book that was announced yesterday. I wrote about it. We've seen uh, that just modest growth is happening. So people are kind of grasping to right now what they can uh, of what's taking place. We'll see what the Dow does today. Uh, also watch gold. So if you're going to trade in these range-bound markets, I would uh, not look to be a swing trader unless two things happen. Number one, you're going to have to get a really bad number that's coming here in about 15 minutes. Uh, I think the number last month was in the 20s. They're looking for it to be about 15. That could be a, a, a key that could um, jumpstart some more movement. Part two of the equation is what will the Dow do today? Will it move a couple hundred points one way or the other? And what will gold do from right now for the rest of the day if you're going to trade in the euro, U.S. dollar in that area? I would shorten your take profit ones and take profit twos. I'd get in and out the door. If you've already gotten your pips from last night, turn your computer off, enjoy yourself, because uh, we'll be ready. We'll send out a report tonight. Tomorrow there'll be some profit taking. It'll be the end of the week. People will be waiting then for fundamental news next week, and there'll be a lot of rhetoric about what's going to happen with the non-farm payroll. The number is going to be skewed, just much like the uh, the uh, unemployment claims have been. So the euro US dollar is near a 2013 high. We've got the uh, pound and Swissies taken out near term levels from the pullback. The uh, US yen is below 98 for a moment. Uh, Aussie dollars hit a four month high, and the dollar is weak against commodity currencies. So once again, the government data will start flowing again. And we are looking for a schedule to be when it's going to get its act together for these upcoming releases. We will have a non-farm payroll class if it's there for next week and then the following week. And if there's any questions, Brian, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, I'll turn it back over to you, my friend. And we'll get ready. So there's a report already posted. I sent it to everybody. It's, it's posted and sent out an email. And then we'll have a report later on this afternoon. And in closing, one quick reminder, if you're trading today, lower your take profit ones, take profit twos, and if it does kick off because of what's happening once the Dow opens, and or the Dow has opened, but what happens with the Dow and what takes takes place, let me see what the Dow is, I didn't even been looking, um, then just watch the Dow today, watch the gold, and then pay attention to what's happening here with this news here. 30 minutes after the news event, we'll get ready to rock and roll. So the Dow's down about 90, what is it, about close to 90 pips, 90 pips, 90 points right now. If it starts heading towards a couple hundred point move, the dollar's going to show more weakness, and this could be a catalyst if gold takes off that could drive this uh, with the momentum, could drive it towards 3,700. But I'm not looking for us to get to 3,700 today or 37. Uh, what, 3729, I think, if memory serves me right. Uh, I think we'll kind of kind of die out right around this 3665 area. We did touch it. We talked about it here in the last week before this hit that we were headed towards that area. It did come up and test it. The minute it got near that area, Brian, it bounced. So I'll hand it back over to you. Gold's up about $32 right now. So people are loading into the gold because of what's taking place. And this tapering. Uh, not happening in November, December. In fact, they're, they're now saying that it could be May of June of 2014. But that's not going to help the dollar short term either. But there's still enough other bad fundamentals in other countries that will probably limit it, this run after today. And I'll hand it back over to you, my friend. All right. Well, thank you very much, Forex Show. Thanks for that. So uh, the trades I put on didn't trigger, um, which I, I really honestly didn't expect that they, that they would. So we're going to take those off. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cancel those trades out, and then we're going to wait for news to occur here in about uh, 15 minutes. Let's see what the news has to say. Uh, give it 15, 20 minutes after the news, and then look for some new trading opportunities there from the levels that we recorded today um, if you're choosing to trade. If not, uh, really good data just to, again, stay away, stay out of the market. Um, we've already made some big moves. It's not going to act in a normal manner, so um, you know, just, just tread with caution. So uh, there we have it. Let's go ahead and wrap it up.
and we'll let you guys get back to your day. As always, thank you very much for being here with us. We know you have other things that you could be doing, and uh, we appreciate you taking the time to, you know, spend an, spend an hour with us. All right, so have a great one, and we'll see you next time. Our next class is Monday night. Um, it's our, our uh, not 8 p.m. class, and uh, it's a quick class. We just simply go through to uh, show how to use the software for Brent, for the new folks, and then we pull up the daily report, and uh, we talk about how we can utilize that daily report to set ourselves up for key channels to watch during the week. So uh, that will be our next class on Monday's night, and then again we have Tuesday and Thursday for the mornings after that. So there you have it. Have a great one. We'll talk to you soon.